main conclusion from the Yahoo Learning to, uh, to Rank competition is full of very you know, practical tasks like web search engine because we have you know, a uh, large amount of training data because the existing algorithm is mature and different algorithms already converge together. So the gap between different, different algorithms is very small. So we need to put more efforts, more, uh, more time, and more, uh, more resources on features to keep improving the result. So uh, another question about fraud. Uh, so you use different kind of features, and I'm sure there are a lot of uh, people trying to beat them. For instance, uh, if you're relying on clicks, there would be some click fraud. A lot of different things, maybe. Could you actually go over what are the different kinds of fraud that are generally encountered uh, uh, with regard to MLR that okay. MLR algorithms face? So there are I mean, many tricks to, to gain the search engine company. Uh, like uh, in terms of click, there are many kind of fraud like trying, trying to. And there are some other uh, strategy. For example, there are some page. They don't have. Uh, uh, it's a it's a page. It's more like a commercial page, and uh, they will uh, the, the maybe the owner of the page. They will continuously input many queries, and then click on it and try to gain this. So generally speaking, is uh, the abusive users they have a rough idea about the you know this kind of uh, how the ranking is uh, uh, it, how the ranking is uh, is provided based on different features and trying to trying to game the system for example also something like based on page rank there are some other system to to trying to game with uh, a high page rank score i mean in terms of, on the gray market, there are a lot of articles, not research papers, there are a lot of tons of articles to trying to help the owner of a website to, to help, for example, like articles, how to rank your uh, homepage to a higher position on Google, on Bing, on Yahoo. So instead, there are a lot of different uh, search engine uh, companies trying to solve different problems like, like one by one. So there is uh, no uh, holistic method to, to solve all the fraud problems. The, the case is sometimes we find, oh, there is a new type of fraud. Uh, you mentioned about personalization. So are there any implicit uh, signals that can be used to build user profile or is it uh, only explicit signing in and uh, Okay, wait, wait. So personalization is a very challenging problem. So in our paper, we call the uh, future of learning to rank. Personalization is one of the very challenging problems. In terms of personalization, there are different level of personalization. For, exa uh, for example, if we can connect the, uh, the, the, the most uh, uh, simplest method, if we only consider the uh, previous query within the same session, that is a very you know reliable and that very easy one because we just uh, need to for example think about it, we only uh, keep the most the previous one query that is the easiest method right we don't need to have any uh, user profile but it also can help us to provide some to adjust our uh, search engine result and if we consider the uh, you know in, in depth for example we can save the uh, search history in the past uh, one month or one year, it gives us more sense about how to provide uh, the ranking result given the, 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 given, the, given the query. And similarly, there are some other strategies, something like uh, uh, targeting, because in Yahoo there is some, some ta targeting, uh, targeting strategy that is trying to obtain user profile based on user's uh, activity. Based on users' uh, query, based on users' uh, view, which um, what, what type of articles he reviewed in the last uh, you know several weeks or several months, and uh, generally speaking, there are different uh, levels of personalization. For example, if user he's a registered user, 
we can have more information. But if a user is not registered, right, he's just like our guest, what we can learn is just based on the big cookie information. And until re recently, we can, you know, uh, connect uh, the registered user with some social account, something like Facebook or Twitter. It like, provides more, much richer information in terms of uh, social, social signals. So generally speaking, uh, personalization have different, uh, different level of personalization at different scale. And the currently we're uh, working on something, for example, very basic one is something like query, uh, query suggestion. We're trying to leverage the uh, most recent query and the recent, uh, uh, recent history to provide the uh, personalized search result. An example is, for example, if a, uh, if a person search like, uh, first search like LG, and th this kind of LG provided you know, different LG result or different LG rec uh, related query. Then people search like uh, uh, washing machine. So given the context, given the history, we need to return the LG related mo uh, washing machine, which can probably best reflect the user uh, uh, motivation or user intention. Uh, in terms of feature engineering uh, for personalization, uh, is that, so how do we take, so once we have user profiles uh, and there may be past histories, how can we convert that to some features, some, maybe some, you know, uh, this names of some feature engineering strategies to do that? And the other thing is, so mostly the features that we talk about are combined, uh, uh, so they are combined mostly in a linear, so we learn linear weights on these or are, uh, so is it like the, li I think you talked about some machine learning techniques uh, being non-linear and they learn uh, non-linear combinations of these uh, features as a function. So, uh, first is in terms of research papers, there are many fancy models and based on our experience, so most of our, you know, uh, personalized result is something related to linear model, which means we have a MR, MR model based on, for example, GBT, provided some basic ranking result. Then we can leverage some of the personalized uh, uh, information, and that which is a linear model, or sometimes is online learning, and provide some, some adjustment. So to answer your second question, so most of our most of uh, our current work related to online learning or personalization are linear model because the linear model is uh, very simple and can be updated relatively easily. And uh, to answer your previous question, uh, actually, you know, we don't have uh, many, you know, exciting research. We we don't have any, we, we don't have any. Uh, high quality paper about personalization yet, because I, I know there are some paper about personaliz uh, uh, personalized ranking. Because from our, from our side, we find the more challenging problem uh, in terms of uh, personalization is about evaluation. First, uh, uh, which is more difficult than feature engineering. As we discussed, for example, NDCG is the current standard evaluation metrics. But in terms of uh, personalization, right, editors cannot uh, make judgment on, 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 beha on be behalf of uh, me. So this kind of uh, ND NDCG, editorial-based method, doesn't work at all. And in terms of the uh, market test or in terms of uh, clique, this uh, personalized result sometimes uh, is also quite tricky because sometimes some people like the personalized result. Some people doesn't like the personal result. I mean, Google already did a lot of, uh, uh, in the past, uh, Google, my, I think, uh, Google registered user, let's say my, my Google, something like that, uh, or, already have some uh, personalized ranking result. But uh, overall, the feedback is not that uh, positive. 
So as a result, personalized ranking, it is believed a very important research direction. But so far, uh, it is an uh, open question. There's no good solution, no good uh, product uh, available yet. Uh, so you, uh, another question. So you mentioned... Uh, uh, this will be the one last question for the session because we are already late for the lunch. So we'll continue it after the lunch for the next session. So one last question for the session. So you mentioned that uh, ensemble learning uh, is what is usually used uh, over uh, traditional approaches like maybe SVM or something. So how does it, uh, is it more expensive than a traditional method and how does it uh, translate into a computational challenge compared to? Uh, so ensemble learning, I mean, uh, there are many different um, ways to ensemble learning. But for the YAP learning to, uh, to rank challenge, what Microsoft Research did is they, uh, they have uh, different algorithms and they try to ensemble you know, tens of their top, uh, models together and finally, uh, you know, have the extra 0 0.1 or 0 0.2 improvement. But in terms of, uh, you know, production, right? So ensemble learning is very, very uh, expensive in terms of computation. Uh, computation. So as a result, so I don't think uh, ensemble learning is uh, practical or useful from the product point of view. Maybe from the research point of view, you know, uh, ensemble learning can can push the boundary for for some delta. That is my understanding. Currently, we do not use ensemble learning production. We use uh, uh, GPT. That is a, a, a addictive model. That is some some kind of uh, uh, combined multiple uh, decision trees together. So that is the only thing. Have some sense of ensemble. Thank you.